In this lesson, we want to solve the equation two cosine theta equals square root two, and the equation two cosine theta equals negative square root three on the interval from zero to two pi. We want to solve these two equations without using a calculator, so we'll solve them using the unit circle and using reference triangles. So for our first equation, two cosine theta equals square root two, we'll begin by solving for cosine theta by dividing both sides by two. So we have the equation cosine theta equals square root two divided by two, which means we're looking for the angles theta on the given interval that have a cosine function value of square root two divided by two. Let's begin by determining in which quadrants the cosine function would be positive. Since cosine theta equals x divided by r on the coordinate plane, the cosine function is positive wherever x is positive. And since x is positive in the first quadrant, where both coordinates are positive, and in the fourth quadrant, where x is positive and y is negative, we're looking for two angles that terminate in these quadrants over the given interval. Also remember, if we have a right triangle, cosine theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Now before we look at the unit circle though, let's take a look at the function value square root two divided by two. We should be able to recognize that it can be expressed in a different form, meaning if we take square root two divided by two and we rationalize the numerator by multiplying by the square root of two over the square root of two, we can write this as two divided by two square root two, which simplifies the one divided by square root two. So we could also say cosine theta equals one divided by square root two. Now let's look at the unit circle. Remember on the unit circle, cosine theta equals x, so we're looking for an x coordinate of square root two divided by two, or one divided by square root two in the first and fourth quadrants. So notice how we have an x coordinate of square root two divided by two here in the first quadrant, as well as here in the fourth quadrant, which means cosine pi over four and cosine seven pi over four is equal to square root two divided by two, and these two angles are in the given interval. So these are our two solutions. So theta equals pi over four radians, and theta equals seven pi over four radians. Now let's also solve this equation using reference triangles. Whenever we have a trig function value that involves one, two, square root two, or square root three, this should remind us of our reference triangles, more specifically, the 30, 60, 90 reference triangle, and the 45, 45, 90 reference triangle. Remember our goal here is to solve the equation cosine theta equals square root two divided by two, or one divided by square root two. Notice if we focus on the 45 degree angle, or the angle that measures pi over four radians, cosine pi over four is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, or one divided by square root two, which we know is also equal to square root two divided by two. So this tells us that if we sketch a reference angle of 45 degrees, or pi over four radians, in the first and fourth quadrants where cosine is positive, we can also determine our solutions. So we'll sketch a 45 degree reference angle in the first quadrant, also pi over four radians, and also in the fourth quadrant. Let's also sketch our reference triangles. And let's label the sides. We'd label the legs one and the hypotenuse square root two. But in the fourth quadrant where y is negative, we'd label this negative one. Notice in both cases, using these reference triangles, the cosine function value would be one divided by square root two or square root two divided by two. So in the first quadrant we have a solution of pi over four radians in the given interval, and our second solution would be this angle here, which would be two pi radians minus pi over four radians, 
which is seven pi over four radians. Of course, we could also say 45 degrees and 315 degrees. Let's take a look at our second equation. Again, the first step is going to be to divide both sides by two. So if we divide both sides by two, we have the equation cosine theta equals negative square root three divided by two. For the next step, let's determine where the cosine function is negative. Cosine is negative or x is negative, which is in the second quadrant, where x is negative and y is positive, and also in the third quadrant, where both coordinates are negative. So to solve this using a unit circle, we would look for an x-coordinate of negative square root three divided by two in the second and third quadrants. Notice that would be here at five pi over six radians, as well as here at seven pi over six radians, which means cosine five pi over six and cosine seven pi over six equals negative square root three divided by two which would be our two solutions. And now let's solve this using reference triangles. When we do this, we'll ignore the sign temporarily to find our reference angle, and then we'll sketch that reference angle in the second and third quadrants. So going back to the reference triangles, if we focus on this angle here, pi over six radians are three degrees, notice cosine pi over six equals the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, or positive square root three divided by two. But since we're trying to find where cosine theta equals negative square root three divided by two, we'll have to sketch a 30 degree reference angle, or reference angle of pi over six radians, in the second and third quadrants. So let's do that. So in the second quadrant, the reference angle might look something like this, where again this is pi over six radians, or 30 degrees, and in the third quadrant here, again, pi over six, or 30 degrees. Let's sketch our reference triangles. So we label the short legs one, the hypotenuse two, and the longer leg square root three. But in the second and third quadrants, x is negative, so this would be negative square root three, and in the fourth quadrant, y is negative, so this would be negative one. Notice in both triangles, the cosine function value is negative square root of three divided by two. So one solution would be this angle here, which would be pi radians minus pi over six radians. And of course, this is the same as six pi over six, giving us five pi over six radians. And our second solution, is this angle here, which measures pi radians, or pi over one, plus pi over six radians. So again, this is six pi over six, which does give us seven pi over six radians. Notice these are the same solutions we found on the unit circle. So while we solve both of these equations twice, I think it is helpful to be able to understand how to solve these types of equations, both with a unit circle, as well as reference triangles. I hope you found this helpful.